All right, well, we've made it to the end of our notes, uh, haven't we? A lot of stuff that we've covered. A lot that we've covered. Um, and I hope that you're not just memorizing it enough to take my test, right? Especially my civil students. Y'all are going to use this a lot. In fact, I've I got an email from Dr. Barnes um, a, a few weeks ago about how his students couldn't do shear and moment diagrams. And he was, you know, frustrated that they, you know, memorize those shear and moment diagrams for one class and forget about it for the next class. Um, I hope you really, and remember the counting the vowels. Not, don't count the vowels. Uh, really try to learn this material because you're going to use it um, in the future. Uh, but anyway, all right. Our final exam is going to be six problems. Each worth the same amount. Um, you have to do all six. They all six count. Um, and it's going to be uh, similar to the last test we took. Um, you know, we're doing this at home. And so I'm going to watch you do take your test over Zoom. You're going, if you want to print it out, you can. Or do your work on your paper. Um, then you'll take a picture of it, scan it, upload it. Uh, our exam time is two and a half hours. I'm going to give you two hours and 45 minutes. And I don't want to give you too much. You don't need all day, right? Got to do this within and submit it within two hours, 45 minutes, um, but six problems. And six pretty large problems. Every problem is a, a good problem in, uh, on its own. Okay, uh, problem number one will be an allowable stress design problem. Allowable stress design. Uh, remember those problems. Hey, th there's kind of two uh, types of problems right here. Um, it's like, hey, what is the maximum force uh, P that I can allow in, in this setup, in this scenario? What's the maximum force P? Um, and it, it's going to have to tell you all the pins, all the diameters for the pins, the, um, the uh, dimensions of everything. Or what is the minimum diameter um, for this pin here at pin C or pin D. Um, so remember, and we'll, we, uh, the next two lectures, I'll go back up over at least one example for all six of these final exam problems, uh, but go back to that section, go back to that test, go back to that test review, go back to that homework, right, and um, make sure you can handle an allowable stress Design problem. Um, make sure you test normal failure, shear failure, and bearing failure. Uh, and for shear failure, back then we were just doing tau is V over A. I want you to do tau is V over A. I really don't want you to do VQ over IT. Um, just do the, the simplified average shear is V over A. Uh, and do I ask for a factor of safety? Make sure you can um, use a factor of safety if I ask for one. Okay, so number one, allowable stress design problem. Number two, a loading and unloading problem. Loading and unloading using the stress-strain relationship, the stress-strain diagram. Okay, it might be normal or it might be sheer. All right, it might be normal, it might be sheer. I might give you the stress and you go to the diagram to find the strain, or I might give you the strain, you go to the diagram to find the stress. Now, when I say give you the strain, uh, I'm talking about I might give you enough information to find the strain, then you take the strain to the stress strain diagram. You load it and unloading it. Remember, find the permanent uh, recovery. Find the elastic recovery, permanent set, the elastic recovery. Um, I'm not going to give you one that curves, right? I'm going to give you one that is is linear in the elastic region. It's linear in the yielding region so that you will be able to calculate that point. You'll be able to calculate that point. You'll find the... Um, that's the elastic recovery. This is the permanent set. Okay, it might be normal. 
Let's see, what was this? Normal stress. Or it might be a tau and gamma. All right? It might be shear. Um, and also, I've got a note here to remember the definitions um, on that stress-strain diagram. E, um, the, um, let's see, what the uh, modulus of rigidity, modulus of resilience, modulus of toughness, strain energy density, you know, is area under curves, the yield stress, the, you know, um, fracture stress, the failure stress. Also, if there are multiple curves here, first of all, make sure you're looking at the right curve for the unloading and loading and unloading. If I tell you, look at material C, make sure you load and unload material C, but also be able to compare these materials, all right? Be able to compare which one is tougher, which one is more ductile, which one is um, has the largest yield stress. Okay. Okay, so number two is a lot of things. Could be a lot of things. Loading and unloading. Number three is going to be from the statically indeterminate section. From the statically indeterminate section. Um, it might be axial or torsional. Remember axial, delta L, FL over EA. Uh, delta L, alpha delta T, L. Um, torsional was torsional stress, TR over J, and angle of twist, TL over GJ. So it's either going to be axial or torsional. Um, probably statically indeterminate, you know, what do the delta L's add up to? Are they equal to each other? Do they add up to a gap? Um, or, hey, what's that angle of twist? Is it allowed to twist? Do they, does the inner twist the same as the outer? Or do they add up to something, add up to zero? Um, so, yeah, look at that section. Axial or torsional. I'm not going to tell you ahead of time which one. You got to be prepared for all of them. Okay, um, number four is going to be 2D or 3D state of stress. I'm talking those combined loading. All right, so if, if it is 2D, um, then I'm going to ask for a shear and moment diagrams. And I'm, the... Bending stress is MY over I. The shear stress is VQ over IT. Uh, test 3, problem 1. Test 3, problem 1 is the type of problem if I choose a 2D problem for this one. If I choose a 3D problem for this one, it's the 3D... Combined loading, um, like test three, problem two. I mean, you know, it won't be that problem, won't be exactly like that problem, but that type of problem right here. So uh, I'm going to make you probably make you prepare for both of those. I'll be honest with you here, almost always... I generally give a 3D problem because my students do poorly on the 3D um, on, on this problem, problem number two, test three, problem number two. But um, I, I think I mentioned Dr. Barnes was telling me the other day about how his students don't, don't do shear and moment diagrams. But so maybe I'm going to throw a shear and moment diagram. I mean, I'll throw a 2D problem on the test. So... Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. You got to be prepared for both of them. Prepare for both. So problem number four uh, might be like test three problem number one, or it might be test three problem number two. I'm not going to give you both of those, um, one or the other. You got to prepare for both of them. All right. Problem number five will be a Moore circle. You will have to draw the Moore circle, 
and then do one of three things, or not one of three things, probably maybe all three, but you might have to do a couple of things. Um, in addition to drawing the Mohr circle, you might have to find the stress at a different orientation. You know, and I am going to start you out with the square, you know. I'm going to start you out right here. You won't have to calculate that. I'm going to give you something like this and say, calc draw a more circle. And then, hey, what's the stress at, you know, 15 degrees counterclockwise from that one? Um, so find the stresses at a different orientation um, or find the principal stresses. You already will have needed to calculate the principal stresses. The principal stresses, in order to draw your Mohr circle correctly, the principal stresses are going to be right there and there. So for your Mohr circle, I want you to label, you know, label where's the center, where's the principal stresses right here. So principal stresses and theta P and the maximum in plane shear stress, um, right, tau max and theta S. All right, so problem number five is fresh in your minds. I, I feel like problems four, five, and six are a little bit fresher than one, two, and three because they're either you know from the last test or this five and six are new. All right, so hope you do well on more circle. Uh, number six is a column buckling. Column buckling problem, um, but I'm not gonna make it too easy, right? Maybe I've got different supports, you know, pin, 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 fix, 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 pin, pin free. Um, uh, different supports for the weak axis than for the strong axis. Okay. And then one last thing, I think the very last problem that we did, make sure you, you might have to do statics in order to get that axial force P. So, you know, like how we did oh, from the statics, I got that the, the force, the axial force inside was not force P, it was 3.33P. It was and so use that for pi squared EI over KL squared. Uh, so I've just got a note there. Don't just... You might have to look at the statics, um, maybe some of the moments or, or something to find the axial force that you'll use in that um, in the column buckling problem. All right, you've got that formula sheet that you've used for test two and test three will be the same formula sheet for the final exam. I'll attach it on the final exam. You could print it out uh, beforehand. Um, you could print it out beforehand um, if you if you want to, or print it out during the test. Okay, so that just gives you an idea. We're going to touch on this on the next two lectures, um, but I can't cover everything. Um, so you need to go back and think about where you think you need the most work, and go back and study that. So that, that, that section, those sections. Our final exam is going to be during our final exam time slot. I don't have it right with me, but look at the um, syllabus um, and, you know, look at when our final exam time slot is. That is when we're going to do it. You're going to log into Zoom and you'll have two hours, 45 minutes to work it out, scan it back in and upload it back into Canvas for your final exam. All right.